Hello everyone and welcome back to the second episode of The Naturalist's Pocket with me, your host, Pat Danette. I'm glad you're all here to join me again for another one of my nature walks. And before we begin this walk, I do have to give a shout out and a huge thank you to everybody that viewed, liked, and even subscribed to my first, my first episode. I'm very flattered by all the response I got and I hope my three favorite subscribers like the video as well. As always guys, I love you. And today for this walk, we're going to take a walk in a place that I've walked many times before. And the reason we're going to do it is because there's an old saying by a naturalist, and I forget who actually said it, but the saying went along the lines of, if you want to see something different in nature, take the same trail you did yesterday. And that's always resonated with me as we walk in some of these places that we're familiar with. We see the seasons change. We certainly know the weather can change in an instant. But nature does change day to day. And if you learn to observe it, you'll also enjoy that. So today we're going to take a walk, like I said, in an area that I've been to many times before. And we'll see if we can find something new, something different. Maybe something we missed on the last time we were here. So enjoy. And let's go for a walk. What'd you find, Riley? What'd you find? Did you find a ball? Let me see. I'm gonna put it in the pocket. Should we, should we take it with us? All right, you can keep it. Come on, bring it along. Remember in our we looked at some pine cones that were chewed up by squirrels and the leftovers were called middens and here under this tree we've got an enormous midden pile of chewed up and discarded spruce cones and this whole pile could be the work of a single red squirrel over the course of a couple of years storing their cones here in these underground entrances and then after they, as they take the cones out of storage, they'll climb the tree, find their favorite perch, and then discard the rest to the ground. So thousands and thousands of 
spruce cone middens. Well, that was certainly an enjoyable little nature walk. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And I think we found some interesting little things that we could talk about here today. And the first two things, we did find a couple of pine cones along with the pine needles from those trees. Now, pine trees and pine needles, their needles always come in distinct little bundles. And you can count the number of needles in a bundle, and it helps you to identify the tree. Now, this is a white pine, and in the case of a white pine, we have five needles in a bundle. And the way I've always remembered that it's a white pine is there are five letters in the word white. So W-H-I-T-E. So that makes this a white pine. And there's the cone of the white pine. The other pine tree that we found has three needles to a bundle. And this is the pitch pine. And I've always remembered pitch pine by thinking, how many pitches can you strike a batter out in? And you can say, well, strike one, strike two, strike three. Three needles to a bundle. And these are the cones to the pitch pine. Anybody who's ever been in South Jersey or the Pine Barrens, this is the common pine tree of the Pine Barrens. We also found these little pieces of wood that appear to have this almost unnatural blue-green color in them. And that blue-green color comes from a fungus that's growing inside of this wood. The fungus is called blue stain or green stain or blue rot or green rot. I think the Latin name is Chlorosaboria aruginacens, but I'll have to look that one up. And the mycelium, or the thread-like structure of the fungus that grows through this rotting wood, stains that wood, that color. And it's not a color you see very often in nature, so I think that's pretty interesting. We did find another goldenrod ball gall. We talked a little bit about these in the first episode. I just thought this one was interesting because it had two, two larvae living in one stem. And the other gall that we found is this one here. This is called the goldenrod bunch gall. And has a similar life history. A little fly comes along, lays an egg inside of the leaf bud. And instead of growing a ball in the stem, like the ball gall, the bunch, ball, the bunch gall grows this bundle or this tight wad of uh, leaves around the larva. Now this, this is a snail shell obviously. This is from the white-lipped snail. You can see the white lip there around the edge of the opening. And large snails are fairly uncommon in our area. And the reason they're fairly uncommon is because our soil doesn't have a lot of calcium. Calcium is the building block of a snail's shell. So this snail, instead of getting calcium from the soil, this snail finds, finds calcium in animal bones, deer antlers, or even carnivore poop that might have bone fragments in it. That calcium is then used to build the snail's shell. And this calcium can also move through the food chain. If a blue jay or a crow eats the snail, that calcium can then be passed on to the bird's eggs. So it gets recycled. And then finally, the last thing, uh, we picked up a little bit of this discarded uh, fishing line. It's a good idea to always pick this stuff up and just dispose of it properly whenever you find it. Animals can get tangled in it, so we like to get rid of it where it's not gonna cause any harm. So. Thank you folks uh, for joining me on another one of my nature walks. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you again soon.